Welcome to Passage to Profit, everybody, the show that's all about entrepreneurism and intellectual property. I'm Richard Gearhart, founder of Gearhart Law, a full-service intellectual property law firm. And I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I work in the law firm doing marketing. I'm also a patent agent, but I don't write patent applications anymore. And I would like to talk about who we have coming on the show today. I am so excited. If you have never heard of Eugenia Kuzmina, then you've been living in a cave under a rock. <laughs> she, <laughs> she is an incredibly gorgeous model. Plus, she's been all over TV, and she has a new series coming out called Spy City. And we're not really sure where that's coming out yet, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So she's here to talk about her career today. And I am so excited to hear what she has to say. And on top of that, we also have Peter Wingos, who's an international branding consultant. And he's been doing that for many years. He has a lot of great words of wisdom. So uh, welcome to the show, everybody. And we also have two presenters coming on today. Right. So we have Raj Sharma and Eric Goff will be joining us later in the show. So, um, but before that, Yes, we have to do the torturous segment <laughs> that everybody loves. Well, who's going first this time? I am going to do Patent Palooza. So this man actually made a fly swatter for your finger. If you ever had an irksome fly buzzing around, you, you got to have this. So for, for our listeners who can't see the, the, uh, the video right now, uh, it's like a large, regular-sized fly swatter, only it's about the size of a toothpick, right? And what he does is he has it put in a little ring on his finger, and it is a, a, a fly dissuader. It's not a fly swatter. And apparently with this little finger-mounted fly swatter, you can uh, uh, disturb the flies or something. So what I love is he says in the summary of his invention, the... It allows for easy cleaning. It's effective in the dissuasion of insects. It's so effective that one often welcomes the presence of the annoying insect to come and bother you so you can use this thing. <laughs> now, this, this guy, I, I think this is fun. Uh, it, he actually got an issued patent on this. And I think his only problem with it was he didn't have the right marketing for helping him get it out into the public. Cause I think this could have been a very fun invention, but it just shows if you're passionate, he had 22, figures, drawings in this patent, patent it. Yeah. Well, I, I think the guy is like one of these big game hunters who gets, who's trying to even the odds for his prey, right? So he got tired <laughs> of chasing them with big fly swatters, and now he's going to use little ones to up the sport level a little bit, right? You know, and... <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Let's move on to our next, our next uh, IP in the news. You get to do this one. I get to do IP in the news. So... Those of us listening out there in radio land, raise your hands if you've ever tried to link uh, a, a, a link to your Instagram post. Raise your hands. Okay, I can see you. So the fact is, is of course, you can't, you, <laughs> we have Peter Rose's his hand, but the fact is, is you can't put a link on an Instagram post, right? At least not today. Not today. And it's really been frustrating for a lot of us who are trying to promote other people's stuff and posting. Well, guess what we found in preparation for the show? We found a patent by Facebook called adding paid links to media captions in a social networking system. So that means that Facebook is secretly underground working on Technology. Not secret anymore. Not secret anymore. <laughs> they have their little scientists, their little computer scientists working in lab coats underground, and they're programming uh, the uh, posts so that you can attach links in your Instagram. Uh, Instagram. So you can promote your website, you can promote stuff on Facebook. And uh, I think the key word in the title is pay, right? <laughs> yes, I had read that they're going to charge two bucks a link on, a face, in a, on an Instagram post, which could add up pretty quickly, but it might be worth it. I mean, maybe you want to be one of the first adopters, but people often say that tech companies don't need patents, but tech companies get patents all the time. In fact, one of our presenters today is a client of Gearheart Law, and he has patents. And I do want to say Facebook is one of the fangs. This is just an interesting little tidbit. So what are the fangs, Richard? Um, you're asking me? You tell us what the fangs are. Fang is a term that was coined by Jim Cramer to take the first letters of the stock market tickers, symbols, symbols yeah. 
for each of these five top American tech firms. And they are Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix. And it was Google, now it's Alphabet because Alphabet bought Google and also YouTube. So it's F-A-A-N-G. And Richard, can you guess what their stock market capitalization is combined, these five top American tech firms? I would say it has to be in the trillions. Absolutely. $4.1 trillion as of January 1st. And so they're charging us $2 per <laughs> link on their Instagram <laughs> post. You know, come on. I mean, how much, how much money do you guys really need? But um, that's why they've got trillions of dollars, right? So, um, so I think it's time now to go on to our guests. Yes, I am so excited. I mentioned Eugenia earlier. She's a model, an actress. We'll let her talk about some of the things she's been in and how she has developed this amazing career that she has. So welcome, Eugenia. Um, hello, Elizabeth. Thank you so much, both of you, for having me on the show. And really excited to talk to you about entrepreneurship and everything. Great. So you started out as a model. Did you start, where did you start your career? I started my career when I was a baby, uh, basically in Russia, in post-Soviet times. Uh, we grew up in food lines. So it's, you know, not unusual for me to be in food lines right now in America. Okay. Um, and yes, I started working professionally as when I was 13 years old. I was uh, earning more than my nuclear scientist dad at the time. So that was a big motivation, you know, to continue working and homeschooling. And at 15, I moved to Paris to pursue my career. That's Wonderful. And for modeling, you moved into movies and television. How did you do that? Because that isn't always possible for every model. It wasn't really a choice. You know, um, it just happened because I actually, it, my career path was not very usual. I uh, had a kid in Los Angeles and my husband was a producer. So, you know, it's kind of a funny thing because I started doing stand up as well and making fun of that, you know, because my husband is definitely in the business and I started to be surrounded by all the people who were, you know, very creative and much more outside of the fashion, maybe more in entertainment, living in Los Angeles. And um, that's how I started after I had my child. <laughs> I, I want to hear a little bit more about the modeling because I've just always been so fascinated about that that industry. So you said you started off as like a, as a kid, right? As a child, a child model? Yes, and then, yes. And then how long did you model for thereafter? Um, you know, my first job was literally when I was born, like two weeks after they just took me from the hospital in Russia and they needed like a baby for to promote health in Russia at the time. And of course, I didn't have any consent about that and neither my mom, but that was the regime in Russia at the time. And then at 13, a lot of brands from the West started coming to, you know, US, to, to Russia and they needed Russian models to promote products. So I started doing campaigns for like L'Oreal and M&Ms and different brands. And uh, that was really lucrative and really, you know, exciting, something very creative um, outside of the box. And then, you know, at 15, there were a lot of scouts who would come to all these countries like Brazil and Russia at the time. That was a trend for models. Obviously, the whole industry changed so much right now. You know, there's much more diversity and it's a completely different industry. But when I started, that was the trend. So they made me sign the contract. I came to Paris, started working with Yves Saint Laurent, um, Dior, among other, you know, Hermes, among other um, designers. So that's, that's how I get started. Well, that's like super impressive. You say Hermes and I'm just like, oh my gosh, goodness, I can't imagine what that was like being a teenager and being able to work with such iconic fashion brands. You know, for me, it was never kind of a glamour kind of thing because I always saw it as a work ethic. For me, modeling is more like being an athlete. You always have to be ready. You never know where you are. You have to sign contracts. At 15, you have to pay your rent, you live in a different country, you have to know all the languages, you have to communicate with clients. So there are a lot of skills that you have to, you know, to be able to, to have to be successful for a long-term career. So I wanted to ask you, though, about that, Eugenia. What is it like to move from Russia to a more Western culture? How did you adapt 
uh, emotionally and personally as you went through all these transitions? You know, it was very exciting because I always, I think you're born entrepreneur, like as an entrepreneur, you know, you just know that you have all these ideas and, you know, different things that you want to do in your life. So I always dreamt about that. And of course, moving to Paris, that was, you know, a big opportunity for me. Um, it wasn't easy just because we were used to, to be like, in the worker society, just kind of like never raise your hand in the classroom or never, you know, share your ideas, never have a voice. So I think that was really inspiring for me, even after modeling, moving into acting to find the voice, you know, to kind of, um, you know, go for it, whatever you do and pursue your dreams. I just find it fascinating that you were born to be a model. <laughs> I recognize it at two weeks. I mean, Richard did come out with a fountain pen in his hand. <laughs> but, um, and I, I mean, it just kind of feels like your life was meant to go that way. Yeah, it was, it, you know, I, I think it's interesting about this career because it's not really, it's not like your skill to be born a certain way, you know, so you have to definitely look back at that and reflect. And uh, my biggest thing is to support all women in you know, pursuit of their dreams, especially after having kids. When I got into acting by accident, and a lot of times people would say no to your career after you have kids, that was really motivational for me to kind of reflect back and say that you can do whatever you want to do, no matter where you are or who you are. Well, I find it fascinating too that you got into comedy. You were in Dirty Grandpa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Fadin Gigolo and <laughs> the gentleman. Yes. The titles speak for themselves. <laughs> so how what was that like going into comedy? You know, I always love to challenge things in life. I think it's really important um, for anybody. So whatever scares you, it's important to go there. And comedy and speaking, especially in a third language maybe was very challenging, but I did a movie with Woody Allen called Fading Gigolo and John Tour uh, Sharon Stone. Uh, and I was looking for an opportunity to kind of, you know, broaden Hollywood narrative and just different stories that we tell as humans. Um, and thank God there is more diversity now, but at the time I couldn't find it. You know, I always used to play Russian spies or, you know, gold diggers, and that that just was very limiting. Right. So I called um, Jerry Corley, who used to work with Jay Leno, uh, to write for him, and he helps a lot of corporate speakers in LA and uh, you know different uh, kind of entrepreneurs. So I learned what it is to write comedy and how you know what it is about comedy that makes people laugh and things like that, mostly like math of it, and then really finding my voice in in this world. So I started doing shows at the Comedy Store and Laugh Factory in Los Angeles, and it was really exciting. You know, when I started doing that, there were not a lot of women who were at that, you know, at that stage. And a lot of times people would tell me, well, you can't dress up like a model. You have to really dress down. You really have to look like you haven't showered for days. And you know, if you're talented, like there is a certain certain way that you have to present yourself and i really rebelled against that i said that's not authentic you know comedy is all about authenticity and sharing your voice is all about that so i just would show up in all these gowns on stage <laughs> and you know when you can make people laugh no matter how you look that's real authenticity and that's that's really what counts and so uh -huh. Eugenia, are you very specific about the roles that you select and that you participate in? Uh, do you reject a lot of roles? And, and how do you decide what roles to take? Well, it's interesting because I think Hollywood is still uh, not as diverse as, you know, as I would love to see it. Um, it. It's definitely moving in the right direction. And I'm so grateful for that, you know. By the way, my husband runs Miramax, so really excited about that. You know, there's a lot of changes in Hollywood, and I'm a big promoter of that. Um, I'm not at the point where I can choose a lot of things. I definitely am very cautious about taking certain roles. 
Um, so yeah, we're definitely moving in a good direction. <laughs> so what are you the most excited about in your life right now? I think my kids, my doctor said I could never have kids. So having a family, especially being by myself since I was 15 um, and working since I was a child, that's something that's very important and instilling good morals into them and, you know, kind of telling them that they can do whatever they want and follow their dreams. Well, they have a great example for that. I just want to say, like, for all these wonderful accolades you have, you seem so grounded in real and and that's really rare especially in the entertainment business i was reading a quote that you had given to authority magazine it's you said that remember people's names and care about them sincerely human experience is priceless i don't you don't hear a lot of people in this industry that walk around and talk like that so well thank you so much kenny i think that's what we you know had it for hopefully <laughs> and i have to agree i'm I mean, I'm very proud of my children too. And it's always so wonderful when you can have kids and they turn out and in ways that you can be proud of them. And no arrests yet. So we're <laughs> 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 but, and you do have a big influence on your children. And if you can influence them in, a, in the right way, but still let them be themselves and grow, I think, and that sounds exactly the way you're parenting. That's how I parented too. <laughs> so. What advice would you give to someone who was trying to get into the industry, specifically women? Um, and, I, and even, you know, I feel like there's not enough diversity when it comes to, you know, women actresses. Like I, I think about a Holly Berry, who's the only woman of color who won an Oscar, you know. So what advice would you give to someone who's looking to break into the industry? Well, first of all, you know, you can do anything and you have to be responsible for the narrative. I think you can produce your things. That's what a lot of women, you know, I think we're not in charge yet, like as, as much, you know, I think you can create your production company and you can do the stories that you want to do. You don't have specifically to ask for anything or wait for anything. That's the most important thing. Like as a woman, you can be, or like as anybody, you can be empowered to tell your story and you have the right for that. So I think, you know, the most important thing is to know that you, you have that power. You just, if you find the right story, you can say no to others and just follow your, your heart. So are the big producers like Merrimax looking for more diversity? You alluded to that earlier. It sounds like they are really trying to make some positive changes right now. Absolutely, yes. Yes, there's definitely more diverse stories that are coming out and I make sure to supervise that. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. So what do, what, are, what do they really look for in a person? Like, let's say I decided I wanted to be an actress, obviously a comedian with this hair. And <laughs> <laughs> but you are gorgeous. <laughs> way I guess but um so what kind of qualities do they really look for because some people make it and some people don't and us normal people never have any idea what that is you know I think your authenticity is always something that we share as humans no matter what and your vulnerability and sharing your stories and even you saying about your hair like we all have this you know my hair is not perfect it's 8 a.m in LA and <laughs> Um, you know, we all have those things. So I think just sharing humanity and um, our stories, there's so many diverse stories. I think storytelling is something that really connects us. Uh, no matter how you look, how old you are or where you are, I think that's the beauty of it. And there's so many channels right now. At this point, it's all about creators. So uh, I think if you have a voice, just focus on finding it. And then you can definitely focus on producing your own content and um, put it in the world. And I think you will find connection to the audience. Right, well, you had Model Mom TV. So that was your own TV station, right? Uh, yes, so basically I had my kids really early, kind of in the middle of my modeling career. And at the time it was kind of like after 25, your life is over. I was with Ford Models and now with IMG and LA Models. So they're really companies that look for, you know, top athletes you have to always deliver uh, at top level. And definitely my boss said, like, there is no way you can have Korea and the kids. And for me, that wasn't the answer. So I had my kids and 
it was, I was struggling to find, you know, other people who had so much passion about the work, but also wanted to have kids. And that's why I created this community to kind of discuss and talk about, you know, people who are passionate being parents, but also having their kids and how they do it and combine it. That's wonderful. We're getting close to the end of our time. I just so enjoyed speaking with you, but I have to ask you, you're doing Spy City and what are your plans for the future? Are you going to keep acting? Are you going to keep doing comedy? What do you think? Um, you know, it's interesting. I don't like to label myself as one thing. I think it's always good to be creative and find different opportunities. Um, right now I'm training for two action films. I'm doing the second film with Guy Ritchie in London. So it just got approved for all the insurance, you know, with the current situation. Um, really excited about that. And if, a few other films and TV series that are coming. So, um, you know, but it's not one label, definitely doing different things. <laughs> that is awesome. That's really awesome. So many different talents and uh, we, we really appreciate having you here on the show, Eugenia. Thank you. It's been just absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, we have to take a commercial break. But don't leave. But Stay don't leave. Here. And we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Passage to Profit with Richard and Elizabeth Gerhardt. Welcome back, everybody, with Passage to Profit. We're here with uh, Elizabeth Gerhardt, and our special executive spotlight this evening is P Peter Wingso. Uh, he's the former CEO of Mango, and he's currently working with Moon Ultra, a company that has uh, solar-powered lights, who's also been a guest on our show. And welcome to the show, Peter. So good to Thank have you. Thank you. So what are you up to these days? And uh, what advice can you give our entrepreneurs about starting a business? Well, um, obviously, these days are quite different from, you know, the days about six months ago. So where I used to spend about 250 days on the road, I've been spending the last 250 days in my house. But that's okay, you know, change, change is good. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that my, you know, number one advice is don't let anything get in your way. I mean, you know, even with this whole pandemic, don't let life, you know, stop. Um, you know, I, I consult with, you know, both big companies and small companies. And um, I feel that, you know, so many people are, and not necessarily unrightly so, but, you know, so many people are very doubtful and, and don't want to, you know, do things or don't really, really want to move on. And they just, you know, don't, they don't really know what to do. Um, but I think that's probably the worst thing that you can do. Uh, the best thing is, you know, go out there and, and live life, uh, you know, go out there and, and, and try because at the end of the day, you know, all we can do is, is essentially, I mean, or the worst thing that, you know, you fail and then you get back up and then you try again. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, with uh, the COVID crisis, Zoom has become such an integrative part of our society now that it opens up many opportunities to contact and connect with people that you may not have had a chance to contact with before. It, it, exactly. I mean, I think it's just, you know, look at the positive. Don't, don't look at the negative, right? Um, the positive thing is that I don't necessarily need to travel, you know, halfway around the world and spending, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars every year on traveling. I can now just get on Zoom and I don't know what it costs, but twenty nine ninety five a month and, you know, I'm there. Well, and for all those people selling consumer products, which a lot of your clients do, there are people like me who have been doing online shopping for many years now who are buying consumer products right now. So the market's not totally dead. People can still invent and sell things and keep business going, right? Absolutely. I mean, all of the clients that, that I work with, many of them, you know, they were very dependent on this wholesale market, distribution market into retail stores. And of course that, you know, for the time being is, is gone. But that doesn't mean that the online market is not there and, and you know, pivot it right, do it right. And I mean, you know, sales are up. I mean, I have clients where their, their online sales are up 800%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's huge. So again, you know, yeah, some opportunities go away, but there's so many new opportunities that come, you know, that come along. And some industries probably will die, uh, but then other industries are flourishing. So Peter, when you're evaluating whether you want to get involved with a company or an opportunity, what are some of the factors that you look at? Um, well, I always say it's not the best product that necessarily wins. 
um, when people come to me and they said, you know, I just spent the last two years, you know, building the absolute, you know, best product, and this is the best that there is on the market. Um, I usually just go, thank you very much. You know, it was a pleasure meeting you. And then I move on uh, because the truth is that there has to be more than just being the best. Um, and for me, you know, it's, it's particular the marketing of a product that, that really makes the difference. Um, and if we really look out there, it's, it's not the best product, it's the best marketed product, it's the best balanced product. You know, it can't only be one thing, it has to be all things in order to really, you know, to really, really survive. Um, and I think an easy example is that, you know, it's not always the best food or the restaurant that sells the best food, but it's the restaurant that has great food, great atmosphere, great service, great everything. That's the restaurant that you really, truly remember. Um, and that's the one that speaks to the majority of people. The, the restaurant that has great food but has nothing else, at the end of the day, they may target a very small group that, you know, that group that only goes to these, you know, super, you know, ex, you know, super food experiences. Uh, but it doesn't speak to the, you know, to the general public. And you have to create a product that, you know, that speaks to kind of everybody if you want it really to be, a, you know, a huge success. You make a great point about it's not the best product, but the best marketed product. I have a beauty closet full of junk. <laughs> you're not the only one by the that way that proves that point and i get you know you buy it and you're like it looks and you're like this is this is not it so it, yeah that's so true yeah so, yeah so it's i think it's it's one of those things is that you know you have to market your product that the consumer goes oh my god i gotta have this and then you get it and then you go like wait why did i buy this again <laughs> <laughs> you are international sales and distribution is that mostly for consumer products it, yeah, mostly for consumer products. So <clears throat> I usually work with brands either in the fashion or, or you know, I don't really work with food brands. Um, most of what I do is really kind of in that fashion accessory space. Um, so I can take um, apparel brands, I can take, you know, health and beauty brands, I can take, um, you know, like Moon, Moon Ultra, uh, which is, you know, a little light um, initially kind of a selfie light, but it's really so much more. And I take these products and I figure out, you know, how to distribute it, you know, initially not so much here in the United States, because, you know, that's a very kind of, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do that. Um, but I take that product and I bring it internationally. Um, my big, you know, kind of area of expertise is, is Asia, Southeast Asia in particular. Most people, they know that they want to sell in, in, in certain territories that just have no idea how to go about it. And I mean, in, in fairness, it is a very, very different market um, out there than it is here. So, and many people don't even realize that these market, you know, kind of exist. I mean, Philippines, you know, who would go like, is Philippine a big market for my brand? Um, and I can tell you guys that, you know, just guess as an example, it's one of the largest markets outside of the United States. They have over 150 stores in the Philippines. And, and like, what are you currently working on? Maybe? One of the brands that I work with is called Moon Ultra, and it's like a little light, and you can put it on your computer, you can put it on your phone, or you can, you know, have it in your pocket, and you can use it for photography. Um, so they launched uh, in January at CES and got best product uh, of the year uh, by Time Magazine. Um, so that's obviously, you know, was a huge win for them. Um, and they were focusing themselves on distribution here. Um, but of course, being at CES and, you know, getting people in, um, there's, there's a huge market outside of the United States. And I mean, we often think that the United States is, you know, one of the biggest markets. And in some sense, it, it is. Um, but again, if you take Southeast Asia and you combine all the countries, I mean, it's much bigger than, than the United States. And if you go to Europe uh, and you combine all the European countries, it's, it's bigger. And if you go to China, it's, it's much, much bigger. And if you go to India, it's, it's again, triple that. So you can very easily um, take a product and, and sell it in, in the international market and, you know, and, and, and eventually maybe it only accounts for, you know, the U.S. only accounts for very little of your overall sales. Unfortunately, we're coming to the end of the segment. So for people who want to do international business, especially now, Peter is the guy to go to. But I also want to point out quickly, since we are an intellectual property law firm, that 
if you have a trademark or a patent in the United States, it's not going to protect you in these other countries, but you can get patents and trademarks in these other countries. So let's say you just have your brand. So maybe you can't get a patent or, or you don't want a patent or whatever, at least trademark your brand in any country you're going to do business with. And, um, this is the guy to help you with that. <laughs> in her unbiased opinion. Yes. But yeah, you can get trademarks just about anywhere and they're really relatively inexpensive. And the time to do it is when you know that you're actually going to be going to market in those countries because um, there's a lot of knockoffs, especially in Asia. And having a trademark gives you something to fight with if uh, you want to use that as a tool to help protect your brand. So we definitely recommend uh, international protection if your company is going in that direction. You are listening to Passage to Profit, the Inventor Show. Hosts Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart, our special guest today, Eugenia Kazmina, and we will be right back after this message. Welcome back, listeners. You are listening to Passage to Profit, the Inventor Show on WOR 710, the voice of New York. And now, from New York, we have Kenya Gibson with a P from iHeartMedia, and she is going to be talking about her segment, Power Move. Hi, Kenya. Hi, how are you guys? I appreciate being here today. Good to see you again. Likewise, likewise. So, really excited about Power Move today. I wanted to give a congratulation to Flippin' NJ. He's known on Instagram as Flippin' NJ, DJ Envy, and 50 Cent. So they both have been doing real estate seminars for the past, oh my goodness, at least a year and a half. I've been to one of the real estate seminars and they're giving information to people about how to get into real estate, how to flip houses. And they recently just signed a TV deal with 50 Cent. They're gonna be on TV doing this show. So I'm really excited for them. Um, it's a it's a great win because uh, they're going to be on TV, but they're also going to be able to educate people about how to get into real estate and what you should be doing in the market. So I just wanted to shout them out and give them a uh, congratulations. Um, and that's a super power move. And we're, we're always looking for those people that are, you know, contributing and making moves that, that benefit the culture. And I do want to point out the DJ Envy is a client of Gearheart Law, so we've done a couple of trademarks for him and his wife. Uh, she has a cosmetics line, and we've helped him out with that, too. So um, it's, uh, it's all part of the family, I guess. Right? We're here to help. Uh, we're here to help. <laughs> <laughs> so now I get to talk a little bit about my latest project, which is Fireside Directory. I've talked about it every show, but if you don't know what it is, it is an online video directory of small business. I am trying to make it into the Wikipedia of small business on video. I interview small business owners and put their interviews on my YouTube channel and on my website. I'm building the site right now, it's new. I don't think there's anything quite like it online right now. This is the first one. And I've had a few brave souls do videos with me. I'm getting up to the point where I'm going to start promoting it. And when I start promoting it, I'm going to use all of the tools at my disposal and eventually hopefully use iHeart, more iHeart marketing than we're using now. We're using iHeart marketing for Gearheart Law, but I also want to use radio marketing for Fireside Directory because I think it's going to be a perfect fit. And do you promise now in front of all of these people that you won't charge $2 a link for uh, emails? <laughs> <laughs> that is not my business model. It's a subscription model, but everything's free right now to do the videos and to be on my YouTube channel. Yes, and we're, we're trying to bring you in and get you hooked, and then we're going to start charging you. So Yes, and, and Richard's got some great ideas. So we've got a lot of ideas for building intellectual property around this because my goal is to sell it in a few years. So, so unless wait. my son wants to take it over. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Which have to buy it from me. <laughs> then it's a family business. So. Right. All right, so that's great. Um, and now for our first presenter uh, this evening, if, if, um, if you've ever wanted to be able to shop online and see what the clothing would actually look on you, our next guest has perfected technology to allow that to happen to a degree that no one else can do. So I'd like to introduce to you Raghav Sharma from Perfitly. Welcome to the show again. Tell us what you're doing and where you're at. Hi, Elizabeth and Richard. It's great to see you again. And uh, 
It's amazing what an incredible ride the last two years have been. Uh, and that's a massive understatement given the last six months uh, since we first appeared on the show. So I'm just happy to be back and giving you guys an update. But uh, if we look back at perfectly over the last two years, it's really been growth on all fronts. Now, I think when we went on the show, we were live with three brands. We tripled that within a year. Now, it's been a little slower going this year with COVID. Uh, and a lot of our brands were really focused on helping them survive. But on a brighter note, you know, it looks like they're going to make it through. Uh, a lot of them are pulling up. And we're just getting in a lot more conversations with new brands who are interested and see the new normal and how shopping will be done. You know, we've just spent time making the platform faster, more efficient. And, uh, you know, Richard, this is something we should probably talk about. But, you know, this past year, sort of December, we launched an AI-based photo measurement app so that shoppers can make their avatars even more conveniently at their own home. And, you know, we've gone from less than 10 people to 20. Uh, most of that hiring is in Montreal. Uh, and we've been hiring through the pandemic. And, but... We're on the cusp of a major announcement. Please explain to our audience who may not be familiar with the Perfitly uh, technology, what it ex exactly does. Sure. So Perfitly, we are an AR platform. So an augmented reality, virtual reality platform that allows you to see yourself in clothes and size up, size down when you're shopping online. So that way, when you go to a brand, you click a try it on button if they work with Perfitly. And we dress your avatar right then and there on a recommended size. And you can kind of zoom in, rotate. But more importantly, because we know that fit isn't just about, does this fit my shoulders or does this fit my hips? It's how does this look on me? And do I like things snugger? Do I think like things looser? So you can size up and size down. And we re-simulate that on the fly. Um, and the avatar is yours. You create it on your smartphone. So it's actually you and not just this thing that looks like you. And the clothes, we work directly with the brands to digitize them. So it's the real clothes. So that way you choose exactly what you want. And for our brands, it means lower returns because people aren't having to guess at their size. And it means more sales because <laughs> a lot of people just leave things in the cart because they're like, you know, I can't figure out if this fits me. I'm not going to bother buying it. And uh, so far, we've been able to reduce returns by almost two thirds for our brands. And we have boosted their conversion rates, which is the percentage of people who actually buy something on their website by 80%. Wow. So, Can you yeah. just walk us through that user experience a little bit, though? Because so I'm online, I'm shopping, I'm using your your technology. What 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 am I going through? Like, what am I experiencing? Sure. So. First thing you would do is you download our app uh, from the App Store or Google Play and you'd create your avatar. And what that does is it takes about a minute and you wear some gym clothes and we take a few pictures of you and then our AI extracts these what are called fit measurements. So it's not your typical measurements like your hips or your waist or your leg length, but it's other things. And we extract those and we create this digital avatar of you which is just this massive cloud shape that looks like you. And then we, uh, when you're on a site that uses perfectly, you'll see a try it on button. You click that and it loads your avatar. And at the same time, the clothing that you're look looking at, we simulate those two things together. So it's actually your avatar wearing that garment. And we use all the same design, uh, sort of design files that cut patterns, the fabric. So, that, you know, if it's silk versus jersey, it will look different. It will drape differently on you. And then you can size up and size down. And we do the same thing again. It takes less than a second. So you're like, aha, I like that size. That looks just like what I wanted. Or, ooh, that looks awful on me. I'm not going to get that. Um, and that's what we're really there to do. And you can use that avatar anywhere we are, we're enabled. It sounds like the truth serum. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, there's been a lot of attempts at, at this before and we didn't want to be just another solution. And so we took our time and we really studied this as goes back to something Peter said of, uh, you know, he doesn't always want the best solution and something that took a few years to develop, but I think we're the best solution. It took us a few years to develop it, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it, uh, we looked at where other people had not achieved results. 
And we realized that there was this whole five-step process that you had to follow and each one had to be accurate and each one had to be integrated together. And we did that. And where people haven't, they've either focused on a couple steps or they've just kind of taken shortcuts and it isn't working. But, you know, we fingers crossed think we're, we're, uh, we're there. That was something I wanted to bring up. When we talked to you two years ago, you were on our very first Passage to Profit show. Brave soul. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I, congratulations yourselves. I mean, you're over, what, 200 episodes now and you guys are uh, really growing. It's great to see that. Thanks. But one of the things that made us feel like you were going to be successful, you did have competition back then, but you were obtaining much, much more data and you were obtaining it in a different way and you were using it in a different way than all of your competition back then and you were doing it right. But it, this has been a huge project, right? Yep. Yeah. You guys have been helping us with our patent application. So you know what a huge project it has been and it, it still is. You know, even our AI photo app, we were hoping because there's so much competition in that space that we could just license something. We could just buy something and we couldn't find anything that works. So then we spent two years building it ourselves. Uh, and now we know why it was difficult for other people, but you know, we, we were able to, we were able to lick it. So. Well, congratulations on revolutionizing online shopping. I think um, brands will be beating their way to your door. Who are you working with now? So Richard, we're working primarily with small boutiques uh, in New York, in LA and a few other things, but you know, uh, I can't say the name, but the we name. are launching next week with a top three retailer in the US. Um, and we're going to be live on their site. We're supporting their private label brands. And, you know, I'm just super excited and super happy to share that with you. And as soon as I can tell you the name, uh, I'll be sure to let you know. But, you know, the team, it's been a long slog. But we're thrilled to have a partner who believes in us and they share our vision for apparel e-commerce. So, I mean, I think the last couple of years have been a lot of great things for Perfectly. And I think there's a lot more exciting things to come in the near future. Big congratulations to you and the Perfectly team for landing this. It's just going to be a phenomenal year for you. Right. So how do consumers find you if they want to use the Perfectly app? Hmm. So they can go on to the App Store or they can go on to Google Play. They can look for Perfectly. They can download the app. Or if they're on one of the brands that use us and they haven't created an avatar before, you know, they'll be prompted there. They can either create an avatar right on, our, right on that brand's website or they can go ahead and do the app. Well, we're out of time, unfortunately, but congratulations to uh, uh, or, uh, the Perfectly team, and we'll be right back with more Passage to Profit after this commercial message. Welcome back, everybody, to Passage to Profit. If you've ever wanted to have a vintage look the way you dress, like back in the 1920s or 1880s, our next presenter has the solution for you. It's Eric Goff from EF Meeks. Welcome to the show, Eric, and please tell us what your product line is all about. Thank you for having me. Uh, EF Meeks, it's basically a men's and women's accessories brand, um, which honors my grandfather's name and spirit. Um, we offer neckties, bow ties, pocket squares, uh, scarves, and most recently face masks. Um, everything, all the fabric sourced in the United States, and we hand sew it here in Lexington, Kentucky. Our bright and colorful accessories or conversation pieces. Um, the purpose of those is to get someone noticed when they walk in the room and remembered when they leave it. Well, I think they're really unusual. I went on your website and looked and I was smitten, I have to say. Anybody, what's the name of your website? EFmeeks.com. Anybody who hasn't looked at these, uh, what a great gift and what fun during horse racing season. You have little horses interspersed, but very uh, tasteful, very, very, really unique and, and fun and whimsy, but tasteful at the same time. I think your stuff is fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, we, we kind of focus on, you know, pillars of Kentucky, bourbon, and the equine industry. Uh, both those things kind of require you to look your best and bring people together. Uh, two things that my grandfather loved to do, so. 
So is that jacket uh, available on your website or uh, maybe the bow tie is right behind you? Yeah, the bow tie is available. Uh, the, the jacket is actually one of my grandfather's. That's kind of how huh. this brand came about when he passed away. Uh, when I was at college of Alzheimer's, uh, I decided to keep his memory alive by wearing his jackets instead of dwelling on what Alzheimer's had kind of taken from us. So this brand also is around to bring awareness to Alzheimer's research. I see you have scarves too. You have, I'm, I'm such a scarf person. I have, I have quite the scarf collection. Um, but I see you have some beautiful scarves for, for ladies on here. Very like sophisticated and it looks, it looks great. Yeah, well, we had several women, you know, they love the fabric. So ask me, what can you do for us? And so the, we have the larger scarves, but also our pocket squares are large enough that they can be tied around the neck or accessorize a purse or something like that. How are people finding out about your brand now? Uh, just recently, you know, I partnered with Carson Kresley. Uh, we're doing a fundraiser for UPHA. Um, it's a benevolent fund to help horsemen and women that have been negatively affected by COVID. Um, so we're doing a custom design in basically all of our accessories that sold on EF Meeks. And those profits will go towards that, that fund to help, you know, an industry that's very important here in Kentucky and, you know, regional. So Eric, I see behind you your grandfather's jacket with a pink bow tie and a purple pocket square. And I never understood how those two accessories go together, if they're supposed to be the same or complement each other. Can you please explain that? Yeah, the, the pocket square, you know, it's like a deep blue uh, with some pink accents to it. I'm always someone that recommends, you know, you try to complement the two pieces. You never really want them to match. Um, you know, some people do like that. And if they, if they do, you know, to each their own, um, you know, we want to embrace people, uh, you know, creating their own style with our pieces. But I generally recommend, you know, you wear, you wear complementing uh, pieces instead of matching. And they go together. Have you, have you been doing any virtual makeovers for people? Like all these Zoom calls that are going on. I feel like all I wear is black. Most people I might see them wearing black, but you have a really great whole look going on there. So are you doing that for people? We do custom orders for uh, weddings and even corporate clients. So a lot of times with weddings, you know, we're getting, here's the colors we have in our wedding. Can you go find something or can you design something for me? So in that sense, you know, in a way, I guess I'm, I'm dressing them to a bit. And where can people find your, find your website again? EFMeeks.com and uh, on Instagram or at, at Meeks Fashion. Well, that's great. Unfortunately, we have to stop. Don't forget your patterns. Your patterns are copyrightable. So if you have some unique patterns, make sure you get the copyrights registered on those. So anyway, we'll be back with more Passage to Profit right after this message. Well, it was an absolutely incredible show, wasn't it? I had a lot of fun. So we had Eugenia Kuzmina, model and actress. And I think her message would be authenticity. I love talking to her. She is one of the most authentic showbiz people I've ever met. Not that I've met that many. She uh, really has just like the perfect soul. Right. And our executive spotlight was Peter Wingzo, who helps you with international sales and distribution. And he was very encouraging. So even though we're doing this during quarantine and COVID, He's got a lot of positive things to and say. And he has a great accent, too. He does. And then we had Raghav Sharma, who is a client with Perfitly, P-E-R-F-I-T-L-Y, like Perfect Fitly, <laughs> Perfitly, uh, Perfitly.com. And you'll be seeing more of Perfitly in the very near future. Because it helps you try on clothes remotely online with an avatar and it is the most accurate program for doing that that exists in the world today and then we had eric goff with ef meeks e-f-m-e-e-k-s.com ef meeks apparel ties pocket squares scarves with beautiful very sophisticated interesting 
attention getting designs in the fabric. It's really cool stuff. You have to go to the website to see it. Yeah, check out the fabrics. They're just incredible things that you haven't seen for a long time. Absolutely beautiful. So. And Kenya Gibson with a P, Kenya Gibson at iHeartMedia.com. And once again, thanks to iHeartMedia for letting us be part of your family. We really and truly enjoy uh, working with Kenya and the whole IR team. And if you're looking for digital media uh, platforms, iHeart is much more than just an entertainment company. They're also uh, an advertising company. They can do all sorts of wonderful things with your website, things that uh, I didn't even know were possible. So if you have any questions, make sure you contact Kenya. And where can people find you, Kenya? Oh, my email is good. It's Kenya Gibson with a P at iHeartMedia.com. And a special shout out, as we do every show, to our producer, Noah Fleischman, who takes the audio from this and tries to make it radio worthy, which is tough in these times. Um, today is going to be especially this, tough because we've got a bad It's going to be a big challenge today. Thank you, Noah. Thanks, Noah. And uh, Eugenio, do you have any final words? Uh, well, I learned a lot from the show. I learned from you guys about trademarks. It's always important to protect you know, your creations. Um, I learned a lot about international sales and different markets and absolutely avatars of the future, you know, and Kenya real estate. Yeah, definitely. There's so much more to learn. And also Eric, uh, definitely creativity and, you know, all about materials and production in U.S. and, you know, local like fabrics. Peter, any, any final thoughts for our audience? Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, don't be discouraged during during this time, you know, go out and and explore and and don't don't let this hold you back. That's excellent right. advice. Kenya kind of piggybacking off of what Eugenia said. This is a, a, such a helpful platform and I'm so happy that it's here because it gives a lot of people the opportunity to share it, share their story and then we can learn from one another's experiences. So, a lot of good information on here today. Um, good energy as we always appreciate and an all around good place to be. So thank you for letting me be a part of it. Well, it's our complete and total pleasure. And if you missed the show. Oh yes, the podcast will be out tomorrow. And you can also go to our YouTube channel, Passage to Profit Show, and see everybody on YouTube, which is kind of fun because they'll be able to see some pictures of what people are doing and uh, yeah and don't forget too to like us on facebook instagram and twitter so you're listening to passage to profit on wor 710 the voice of new york